Have you ever been curious about my thoughts, experiences, opinions about Ireland's goddess Bridge or Bridget? Well, Dag D. Vogus Falcher, hi and on welcome. I'm John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School, and this is a cash store question that I was asked not so long ago. And I thought, yeah, I'll actually happy to kind of sit and have a bit of a chat and banter about her because I have some very strong opinions about her. And I will say I've one very personal spicy take, which, you know, is no in in no way something we can corroborate um and it is 100 percent personal gnosis um so yeah stick around if you want to know what my spiciest take about bridget is and um, those who know me have been around the irish pagan school for a while may have actually heard this one but still um for me the goddess bridget is a very unique and interesting kind of character um an interesting kind of deity to work with and to interact with because of my associations with her father um so the deity that i work for work with that i am kind of called to honor is on dagda on dagda more and we know from the stories and from the mytholo mythological genealogy that the goddess breach is his daughter um and it's very clearly stated that she is breach daughter of the dagda now he has other children um he is the great and ample father which is the translation of all at her um, not father of many by the way i've made that mistake in the past and thank you morgan Dimer, for correcting me and i'm happy to kind of make sure i i'd say when i make a mistake and what i have learned and who i learned it from um, so all at her is one of the epithets of the dagda and it doesn't mean all father or great or father of many what it translates to is great or ample father um, which, you know, pretty much if we were to take a, a great father and make it a common parlance today or kind of, you know, take it into modern language, it'd be Big Daddy. So the Dagda is Big Daddy. But who is Big Daddy to? Of course, Bridget. Now, Bridget is a very kind of passionate character that we see through the mythology, through the information. And what actually occurs with her in the mythological cycle is it's quite difficult to be honest because when breast takes over from nuada okay so this is this I, I get caught with this every single time anytime i'm asked a question i i have to kind of give a bit of preamble a bit of kind of stories and you might think it's odd but for me i'm tickled every time that happens because we have in the ancient irish society and structure of these stories something known as a rave scale and a rave scale is a pre-story and so in order to kind of explain and give someone the answer to the question you'd have to make sure they know the previous story the previous story the rave scale that would then interlink with it so in the rave scale of the pre-story about the first battle of my torah Nuda loses his arm Nuda the, the and becomes Nuda or get lot Nuda, Nuda the silver arm and when he loses his arm, he's no longer fit to be king. The person who steps in as king is Bress. Now, Bress is then uh, half Fomorian, half Tuatha Danann, and he overly favours his Fomorian ancestry at the expense of the Tuatha Danann. But Bridget is here in this narrative because Bridget is wed to Bress, and from her union with Bress, she gives birth to a son known as Ruadon. And Ruadon is again, you know, raised in the house with Bress, and he favours his Fomorian side as much as he's a two of the Danon. And we have a lot of information about Bridget being a goddess of poetry, being a goddess of kind of music, being a goddess like who, who supports and inspires poets, a goddess of healing, but also a goddess of smithcraft. But one of the more sad elements of the stories that go along with Bridget is what happens with Ruadon, her son with Bress. Because on the run up to the second battle of Moitura, everything is gearing up for war, the Fomorians have invaded, and Ruadon, thinking he's going to earn himself a place of renown within the Fomorians, goes to Gwivnu, the chief smith of the Tudor Danon, and asks for a spear to use in the battle. Now, he technically doesn't lie because he's planning on using it in a battle. He doesn't say that he's going to use it against the Tudor Danon, though. And so Gwivnu makes him a spear. And every single weapon made by Gwivnu is said to cast a mortal wound. So anyone hurt by it is a goner. And so Gwivnu makes this spear and gives it to Ruadon. Rudon straight away takes the spear and casts it at Gwivnu, thinking he's going to kill the smith, undermine the two of them war effort, and you know then earn his father's kind of regard and cement his place with the Fomorians. Interesting thing about Gwivnu is it can, all of his weapons cast a mortal wound. It's game over if you take the damage. 
but not it seems for Gwivnu, because Gwivnu pulls the spear out of himself and throws it back at Ruadon and slays him. Where Bridget comes into this though is Bridget is comes to find her child slain and the emotions well up in her such that she makes the first keening that is ever heard in Ireland. And so keening is uh, a funereal practice which came down through the, the generations in Ireland. It was actually a professional thing done by people who would turn up to, to grieve on behalf of the community or the collective. And it was this wailing, moaning, screaming noise that would be presented to honour the passing of the dead, but then also to grieve loudly for a community, for those who couldn't grieve loudly themselves. And so that goes back to the goddess Bridget, which I think is, again, I've said interesting so many times and fascinating, but also very heart-wrenching. Um, so Bridget is core in so many of these narratives. Now, I'm sticking very firmly with mythological cycle Breach here, and I am saying Bridget, but it's Breach is, is the name that's attributed to her. I'm steering clear of the more modern kind of interpretation of the patron saint Bridget, or who has kind of the amalgamation of the, the goddess or the movement of the goddess through the eras to be accepted in or kind of shifted within the Christian belief um, as a saint there. Um, there are, if I was to give a recommendation, Orla Costello is someone who works for and with Bridget in the same way I work for or with the Dagda. Um, she teaches a lot of classes. She teaches some of the Irish Pagan School. She also has Bridget's Forge, which is out there, which is her kind of teaching like herself in her own right, which we recommend absolutely. Um, but Bridget has turned up in my stories, the stories that I write. Um, and I have a couple of books out, Tales of a Dagda Bard. And Sometimes I just sit down to type, write a story. I, I get myself into a space. I, I just say, okay, whatever story is going to come is going to come. And I've written about Bridge, Bridget a couple of times. And invariably my stories are coming from the perspective of the Dagda in like, how is he dealing with his child? Um, and the idea of this very passionate, very powerful, very kind of like, flame entity which is breach how does her dad deal with that of course he'd have to teach her you have to train her you have to educate her and that's why she has so many different kind of areas of expertise as a deity in my mind now again i'm not saying that she is the way she is because of the fact that she is in her own right um a deity to be honored and worshipped and respected but just the idea of a, a living fire that is breach running around not being able to control her emotions and then her dad just picking her up putting her in front of an anvil and giving her a hammer it's like okay work out your feelings there this is how we use our energy this is how we kind of drive things forward um now again there's no story of that in our ancient mythology but i've written the story of that because it really tickled me to see because how would a dad deal with breach when she was small um but we see Breach throughout the stories um, in a number of different capacities. She is listed as engaging in the war effort that happens when the Fomorians, when the battle of the second battle of Moitura comes along. Um, and I think she's listed among the ones who cast fire down from the skies, which is, you know, magical activity in its in its way. Um, now, I I just love the idea of heavy metal Breach. Other people are like, you know, the flame keeping Bridget or the healer Bridget or the poet Bridget. To me, Bridget is goddess of engineers. She is the goddess of like the blacksmith and the forge. The same way Gwivnu is, you know, there as a god of blacksmithing. Like she is like, okay. So Gwivnu sits within a group of deities known as the three Dini Danan, the three gods of skill. Gwivnu, Krejna, and Lukta, and the right and the brazier, the metal, the fine metal worker and the woodworker. Um, and it's the union of their three crafts which made these spears in the second battle of my turret. Again, back to the rave kill. Um, but Bridget herself is a goddess of smithcraft. And so where many people look at her as a healer, many people look at her as, uh, as the poet and the inspiration or as the mother who kind of keens for her child, the one that I seem to connect with most personally myself is Bridget in front of the fucking anvil. Um, time and again. And I've known many people who work with Bridge through their time frames and Breach is gentle in some ways, but also Breach will put you in the crucible and forge the shit out of you. She will drop you on the anvil and hit you with the hammer. 
to to break away that which does not serve you to to kind of hammer and temper you until you become the best version of yourself you can be and that's not always that gentle it's it's done in the right way it's done for the right reasons but it's not always that gentle um and so the spicy take i promised at the top end at no point in any of the mythology in any of the lore in any of the genealogy do we have a listing of who Breja's mother is doesn't happen it's nowhere people speculate that it's danu um but then people also speculate that the dagda is wed to danu and that like danu is his mother and um, but even we don't have information about danu and then danu could be anu which anu could be anand anand being another name for the morrigan so there's a lot of kind of stuff going around here and the confusions of it but it is where my own personal gnosis comes into this and this is something that laura disagrees with which is why i don't say it very often but for me and this is like John, this is John O'Sullivan as a practicing pagan, not John O'Sullivan as an educator. And that's why I want to be clear where I'm, I'm stepping into this very spicy take. Um, I personally feel that Bridget's mother is the Morrigan. Now, the Morrigan is not a motherly deity at no point. Like the Morrigan actually has one child, according to the mythology, and that is a guy called Mech. And Mech is born with three serpents in his heart, such that when he would grow to full like thing, when his heart would grow, when the serpents would grow, they would destroy Ireland. Um, and that is the only child, I believe that's the only child listed of the Morrigan, listed specifically as a child of the Morrigan. And Mech is killed, but he's not just killed. Dean Kex then has to remove his heart full of these serpents burn it to ash and then take the still burning smoldering ashes and put it in a river to quench it and prevent these snakes these serpents these page these monstrous entities coming and destroying ireland and this is another rave scale folks because the quenching of these ashes in the river is what gives the name to the river barrow which is still in ireland there today and runs down through wexford so um yeah that is where I am with Bridget. I, I have a lot of time for Bridget. I have a lot of time for Bridget people. Um, there's a lot to be done for it, but I think people who kind of focus solely on one aspect of Bridget as be it the healer or the poet or the mother aren't really fully seeing Bridget for who they are, which is a hugely multifaceted deity and someone worth getting to know for their variety and their complexity. Um, in all of the ways that they can manifest for a person and their life. So with that, Dagdeev, thank you very much for being with me for the chat. I really, really appreciate it. If you want to know more about Bridget, as I said, we got classes over in the Irish Pagan School for that. Go follow Orla Costello's work in the Bridget's Forge. And um, yeah, if you want to know more about anything here, throw me a message like and share this if you think someone else will be interested in my take or my talk on Bridget stuff. And until next time, look after yourself and take care. Goodbye.